So I did not do a Vlogmas yesterday because I was just, um, I don't know, I was just, I was feeling sad and vlogging, it just didn't feel, you know, it just didn't feel good um, or feel right but just because I had so much on my mind, you know. Um, the other night I had posted on my, at the end of my vlog that I got word of a young boy in our school district who passed away. Um, he was riding a four-wheeler and hit a, hit the side of a truck, I guess. I'm just, re I'm just reciting what was on, uh, the new news article that I saw and he was 14 years old, freshman in high school and died. So he's just a year older than my daughter. Um, and our school is kind of unique. First of all, we're a small town. We have, um, just over 2000 people. Maybe it's under 2000 people. I'm not sure, but we're a small town and our high school and our elementary school. I have the dishwasher open and my dog is licking the dirty dishes. Um, our elementary school and our high school is all connected. Um, I'm making my breakfast, sorry. Uh, and so like the kids see each other in the hallway passing and stuff, you know, when the high schoolers are coming down to the junior high um, for different classes and stuff, you know, they, they see each other plus after school programs and, you know, it's, and this kid had, he had a, he had a big personality, you know, he was kind of a class clown and, um, it's, it's just unbelievably sad. And his mother is my daughter's junior high math teacher. And so, um, it's just, it's just, it's just so sad. You know, it's sad any time of the year, obviously, to lose a child. I can't imagine. But then also, you have the holidays. Um, holidays coming up, and, you know, it's usually such a happy time. And you have all of these reminders and things. You know, we have our stockings out with our names on them. We have presents under the tree already wrapped for the kids. Um, it's just so sad. It's, I just, I don't have any other words to describe the feeling of sadness, you know, especially someone as young and as close to my own children's ages. Um, crazy sad, you know, continued prayers for this boy's family and friends and I can't imagine what his young young classmates and friends are it's just how hopefully they're able to process things I know I spoke to a couple of teachers and um other staff that work at the school because I used to work there and um you know just talking about how hard and difficult it is the kids don't know how to process their emotions you know they're trying to figure figure everything out so I just don't really have anything else to say it's just really really sad so okay so I'm making I'm gonna make a couple of pot pies I had this leftover pie crust from Thanksgiving and I went ahead and baked it for a little bit got it all flaky then I made a gravy, but I'll tell you. So this is turkey that I cooked and froze. Um, let's see, I froze it, I think I did it in October, maybe early November, I'm not sure. Um, but it's not from Thanksgiving. It's, I had, it's a spare turkey that I had had that I had cooked whole and then um, shredded all the meat up and put it in the freezer. And I made a pot pie right after I made after I cooked the turkey and then froze the rest. There's, I still have an entire gallon Ziploc baggie full of turkey to use for future meals. Um, but this is just a, a, a 
bag of frozen mixed vegetables and then I added some extra peas, frozen peas in there that I had. And then also, um, so like the my breakfast potatoes that I use, like the little hash brown potato cubed things, I ended up throwing, I only had probably half a cup or so of those left in the bag and I went ahead and threw those in, in here. And then I made a gravy, which I forgot that I had some chicken bouillon and I'm using the beef flavored bouillon now and I just did water, bouillon, and then cornstarch. Um, you want to make sure that your water is cold when you add cornstarch to it because otherwise it will clump up. Um, if, you're, if your water is hot and you add cornstarch to it, it will, it will stay separated and not blend in. But you can see this is blended and the cornstarch will just thicken the gravy. So I've already added it in here. I might add just a little bit more and then I'm going to put them in my pie crust and put a top on it. A little bit more liquid. I'm just heating everything, heating everything up um, and getting the liquid thicker. So I just added more, so it's a little runny right now. But as it heats, that cornstarch slurry will make it thicker. So, and then making sure my vegetables and everything, my potatoes are cooked through and I'm gonna put it in that pie crust. I need to get another container out. Um, and I'm using, so I'm going to put, I've got these two pie crust. They were just the frozen pie crust. Um, they come like this, they're thawing right now. And I'm going to put one in a big pan and then I'm going to use these um, buttermilk biscuits for the topping. Um, and then I have these homemade biscuits and I'm going to use those for the other. Now the last time I made this I didn't pre-cook my pie crust and the pie crust was doughy and kind of soggy so um, I made sure that I pre-cooked the pie crust now. Now I'm going to go ahead and shut the stove off because everything's heated through and my gravy's nice and thick. Um, I did add a little bit of salt and pepper but I didn't really add any other seasoning because you're going to get that flavor of the gravy as well. Um, but I'm going to put, I'm going to put my pie crust in another pan. I'm going to put my pie crust in another pan and then I will come back and show you how I assemble. Okay. So this one, I have to wait for the dough to thaw still because it's still frozen and I can't unroll it. So I'm going to leave it here and let it thaw. And then this one, I'm going to go ahead and put the stuff in. So... I will probably, I'm going to use a measuring cup. Oh, and I just spilled half of it. Okay, so there's that. I will go ahead, I will use these. So that one's done. Not a whole lot. I like it super doughy. Or not doughy, but like I like a lot of breading. That way I can mix it all in. So that's, that will go in the oven. I may freeze this one. I don't think I can get it undone still.
Yeah, it's still too brittle. I'll have to come back to that. Okay. I went ahead and put this in because I'm impatient. I put it in the microwave for 10 seconds. It already crumbled a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just gonna try to spread it out. And it won't go all the way up the sides because it's not a big enough pie crust for this pan. Oh, also I switched pans because I don't have enough filling to, to do that aluminum pan. So I got my largest round pie pan. This is just a Pioneer Woman one. And I'm just gonna put the pie crust in here. I'm gonna pop this in the oven for probably seven minutes or so. And let this, oh, you know what I need? Here's a piece of pie crust. I'm gonna take a fork. and just puncture it because it will fill with air. So I'm gonna put that in the oven. It's just on 350, just to let the crust get a little flaky. Okay, so, oh, shoot. So I have, there we go. This I just took out of the oven, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the filling inside. Not even gonna wait for it to cool off. I'm just gonna go ahead and dump it all in there. I wanna make my favorite, like if you, buy the banquet pot pies, um, the little like TV dinner ones that are only like a dollar, or at least usually Kroger has them for like 10 for 10. My favorite ones of those are the Salisbury steak. I think there's a stem in the green bean. So I'm gonna smoosh this around. And you can add, if you like a little, there's a lot of meat in here, normally like, pot pie that you get from the store doesn't have this much meat. But I had already shredded this and froze it, like I said, and then I just took my kitchen shears and like cut it all up so it's finer. And then I like a meaty casserole. I don't want anything that's gonna be where it's just all gravy and vegetables. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and use, should have put this back on the tripod. Let me do that real quick. Okay, so I'm going to I got that. See, this fit perfectly. I wouldn't have been able, I wouldn't have had enough to put on the other. I'm going to go ahead and use what I have left here. And then I've got these frozen biscuits. These are ones that I made. Let's see if I can. Okay, so that is gonna be it. And I think I'm gonna bake this one tonight. And then this one's going to get covered and go in the freezer after it cools completely. So yeah, I think that's what, and then we'll be able to pull this out and I can thaw it and then heat it up in the oven and make sure the biscuits are cooked and we'll be good to go. You could also, I'm just thinking about this now, if I didn't already have these biscuits open, now these weren't open, I did op I put them in freezer paper and wrapped them in foil and put them in a Ziploc baggie so they don't get freezer burnt. Um, Cause I like to make the biscuits ahead of time. So we always have them to pull out for biscuits and gravy. Um, you can freeze this without putting the biscuits on. So if you have like that casserole dish that I had earlier, the aluminum one, 
Just wrap that in freezer paper and then put foil over it so it doesn't get freezer burnt, especially if you have a, a deep freeze. Um, go ahead and wrap that up real good. You can use saran wrap in, instead of freezer paper if you don't have any saran wrap and then foil. Um, make sure you have a good seal on there and then freeze it. And um, you can, whenever you pull it out and thaw it, before you pop it in the oven or you could pop it in the oven to heat it up and thaw it and then the last like 20 minutes or so put your biscuits your thawed um or can't your thawed either homemade thawed biscuits or your canned biscuits on top and then pop it back in the oven to cook the biscuits that would be a an easy meal as well so and this is all super if you have your meat already cooked that's why I like to keep frozen meat in the freezer, chicken, turkey, something, you know, frozen that you can just pull out and add to a dish. Cause this is something really simple to make. Um, something else you could do is, normally I do it with either ground turkey or ground beef, but you could do a turkey shepherd's pie. Um, so basically the same way, but instead of putting biscuits on top, you would put mashed potatoes and then cheese. And normally you could do a crust, but normally I don't. I just do it in a casserole dish, um, like a 9 by 13 pan. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Actually, I'm going to put it, I'm going to leave it on the counter so it can cool off. Move this to the center and pop it in my oven. So yeah, I wanted to show you, I just pulled this one out of the oven and it's nice. The biscuits are nice and toasty and done. And remember our mixture was already heated through and our pie crust was um, already baked. So you just have to basically cook the biscuits. Um, so yeah, this will be for dinner tonight. Um, going to make some spring rolls tonight. I know <laughs> they don't really go together, pot pie and spring rolls, but the reason I'm doing this is because the other night, you know, the day that I made the Italian beef, I have so much of it, um, and we've been eating leftovers, uh, but they're getting old. Not, not getting old, like they're still good to eat like they're not gonna make you sick or anything but we're getting tired of eating Italian beef so I made a pot pie and then tonight I'm gonna make some spring rolls the kids are not a big fan of pot pie and I'm sure that they won't like the spring rolls either so I'm gonna this is it's basically we're gonna have these in the fridge and we're just gonna pull them out and eat whatever we want to eat so we might all be eating something something different but um, yeah, we'll have options now instead of just eating the Italian beef. But yeah, so that, that pot pie is done. I wanted to get on here and show you real quick this that I made yesterday. Um, I got the picture frame at Target, but these are, maybe you can see it better now. These are old handkerchiefs that my mom gave me, um, these were, I believe some were my grandma's and some were my aunt's. And she gave me these and I've been looking for a way to display them. And I found an idea on Pinterest and I've kind of been searching for this frame ever since, um, or one that's long and slender like this. So I finally found one the other day when we went to Target and I steamed and ironed my hankies and got them put in there. Um, the back I couldn't get closed quite all the way on one. Um, I'm afraid to press too much because I don't want to break the glass. But I was able to get all of these shut except for the one here, which is fine. It doesn't stick out to where it won't be able to hang on the wall still. So I'm going to find a spot for this and get it hung up um, within the next few days. But I really love how it turned out. 